demanded uh, maybe some some patients, and then this will be cleared. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Can't hear you. Is there any other feedback from anybody? So just uh, you can just raise your hands, or you can even type in the comment in the, in the chat box. Those on YouTube too, as well. We're not. Uh, you're not I excluded. Imana, can you? Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Amas. Okay, good. So I've not seen anybody raising their hand. I wonder what's up. Anyway, in my experience uh, with this stage, I, I see that the person is quite excited about it. Please, if you agree, just type five in the in the chat box. If you agree that this stage has been interesting and you would we probably like a part, another part of it. Please just, just type five in the chat box. Let me see how many of us are following. It's just for us to catch our attention. Good, good. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Abib. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Praise, Abdul Qadri, Fortune. Joshua, Jerome Wale, Chizuru. Wow, that's exciting. That's exciting. Okay. Okay. If I insane, kind of fine, but was tough. All right. So, yes, I think we've gotten enough feedback for the day. But then it's still, it's still very open. We still have more time for that. Meanwhile, as we said, uh, as I said in the beginning, let's, let's get to understand more about the open source project and answer some questions that you'd like to, to, to get answers to. So our very, very own Toby Loba Adejumo is an expert in the industry and he will be leading us through this webinar session. So dear Toby, we are so ready for you and we're excited to hear from you. So hand over, our, I'm handing over control to Toby Loba Adejumo. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Let me quickly share my screen. Yeah, so let me see. Okay. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. And I will be introducing you to the open source project. I've been reading the engagement on Slack regarding data science track, you know, especially the Pago challenge, the, eng the engineering intents. I have seen the problem some of you are facing with Kubernetes and, uh, you know, and also with the storytelling track, you know, trying different libraries, beautiful soup and selenium. And I congratulate you all first for your doggedness and second for your persistence and collaborations. I have also seen selfless participants in this internship. I think I can remember some names off the top of my head. I, I have seen Jolomi in the data science track. I have seen Joseph Utsuk. I have seen John. I have seen Ayolua. And in data engineering, I have seen another John. I've seen Ebuka. I've seen Abisoye. I've seen Sophia Jack. In storytelling, I have seen Ido, and I've also seen Akonde and how we try to engender conversations to further galvanize collaborations, which is the pith of the open source project. And there are others I haven't even mentioned that have been of so much tremendous help in this internship program. Um, and they've been so selfless. And in their own little way, they've been shining, um, they've been shining lights in their own little way. So let's move on very quickly to what we have to do. If you have any questions, you can always leave them on Slido using the event code 77765. And just a little caveat, if your question is my code is not working or I cannot spin up a cluster, or if you ask, or if you want to ask me, data storing telling track is very difficult, please not here. <laughs> 
I know that these are actually very valid questions. However, we'll, we'll be having another session different from this. We'll be addressing all these questions further down the line. So the questions that you should ask today should be related to the open source project if you have any doubts or posers. Now, moving on very quickly, open source is very powerful, right? It lowers barriers to, com to collaborations by allowing different people come together and share ideas in, in order to move projects very quickly. Now, the best thing about open source for me is reading people's code and the collaborations involved also. At the end of this open source project, believe you me, you would have learned so much from one another. For some of us, this is our first time working with someone on a project, you know, and uh, you, you need to be very ready to quickly learn and adapt. Even at that, some of us have been using GitHub for a while now, and I see some of us, with the way we use our GitHub, we just probably to put codes online without even having a proper commit message, you know, all those kind of hustlers kind of using, um, that's the kind of approach that we are using to make use of GitHub. You know, you, you, you put your code on GitHub, you won't put a readme file, you won't even include license to your code. And this is the time that you learn how all these are, are being done properly when you collaborate with your fellow interns. This project will also be assessed based on how it validates real life application. Today's agenda is very test. I'll be talking about the project structure, right? How you, you can meet with your collaborators. I'll be talking, and then I'll be moving over to the rules of engagement, where I'll talk about the roles and responsibilities. Also, I'll be giving you tips, guidelines, and how you can navigate the repository. This will be practical. So let's move to the next slide. Now, each open source project contains a maximum of 20 contributors, and that's from the data science track, the data storytelling track, right, and the data engineering track. And we've put all of you together in a group, and you're expected to also work together based on your strength. You're also expected to come up with requirements for your project and then put them in the carbon board. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that some of you might not know what the carbon board is, so I'll be demonstrating this to you so you can work on a project together and set up your requirements on the, on the board so that each of you in the group can actually move your project, your the tickets from, from um, to do to in progress and then to completed. So the duration of this project also is for 21 days. Uh, now, this is very, very important and pivotal to the success of the open source project. So we are defining two roles, right? And that's the project lead and the query analyst. So now the project lead is responsible for driving engagements within the team members and also for managing requests. Engagement within the team members includes my code is not working. What is the best way to, you know, should I make use of a particular library or not? Do you think I should use TensorFlow? Do you think I should use um, um, Skitlearn? What do you think is the best approach to solving this problem? So that's the job of a project lead. It's also responsible to for managing requests on, 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 on GitHub. So for instance, let's say I, I make a pull request and I need to merge it to the master branch. That is the job of the, project, of the project lead. So it's the one to make the request. Okay, should I merge it now to the master branch or I shouldn't do that now, right? Based on the previous comments from others. I'll be demonstrating all of this live so you get, you, you, you be able to relate much more closely than now. So it should be rotating such that any member of a team interested in being part of the project can take charge as a lead for five days. So for instance, let's say um, today, Jolomi is the project lead for his particular group. And then after the next five days, another person can also take charge and say, let me be the project lead. So everyone can have that feel and understand an understanding of how an open source project is being run. Also a private Slack group will be created for you and your team members such that no external party can see what you're doing or, or, or listen to your um, contributions or your propositions, right? So the Slack group will be created privately for you on Slack and where just you and your other 19 group members can actually see what you're doing. And for the query analyst, this will not be rotating. This is a fixed position such that any member of the team that is interested, right, and wants to volunteer his or her time or his or herself to be the go-to person in sending out mails or requests to the AMOE team. So for instance, let's say you, you want to change your, your data set or you feel that this is very um, difficult for you as a group to actually work on, or, or you think, how, how can I effectively train this my data set? It's, um, it's over 100,000 data. Now, this is the job of, your, of the query analyst is the one that will be liaising, serving as a mediator between the group and AMOE team such that we don't receive inundated number of requests from everyone in the project. So if you 
think you you feel you have like a question or a suggestion based on on what you are currently implementing or, or you or you feel that um in your group basically they're not giving you chance to voice out your opinions or if you or let's say somebody makes a pull request and you think that pull request is not valid but then your project lead actually goes ahead to make this request then you tell your query analyst he or she liases that information to us so we know what to do next and the next steps that we can take to reiterate for each group for this open source project we'll be having a maximum of 20 percent spark group right a project leader will be rotating amongst all group members and anyone interested can show interest among team members now slack is also the official channel for communications for the data science project now tips and guidelines of course i'm going to give give you tips and guidelines you know on how, how you can effectively scale through this project so the first thing that comes to mind now is how you can frame the problem and look at the big picture right now we have given you some data sets already and you need to understand what you really want to do develop like a business case know that okay if if for instance let's say um the data sets given to you um they are numerical data right let's say the prices of, of houses in um, cape coast ghana for instance and you you want to um probably the, the the use case that you have in mind is for categorical so what you can now do in that sense is you can specify a range probably from ten thousand naira to fifty thousand naira as cheap as expensive so defining your understanding the use case or what you are or, or what you really want to solve helps you so you don't even waste so much time trying to solve uh, a regression problem when in, in real sense classification should have been the best case scenario for, for that particular project and also you also need to explore the, the data given for insight now let me give you a scenario now this is one of the most crucial steps right that you need to do so when exploring your data you need to look for for a part so for some kind of structure in your data sometimes you have to you know make informed decision as a subject matter expert and create new columns from existing columns you know so for instance let me give you an example so let's say i have a data set and i have a data set yes and i have a problem house house per prices per year yes something like that yes and for for me to actually make an informed decision what i need is the average price so I can divide divide the prices for a year by twelve. So I, so I can get the average price. And then when I'm now making use of the column, I I, I ignore the price, the um, total price, and then make use of the average price, right? So when you are doing this, you, you also need, need to check the correlations between your features, right? So you know the best feature to use. And this is also another an, another um, interesting thing that you also need to take note of like a, a very solid tip if you must say and the last tip I'm, I'm giving to you now is you also need to explore many different models and shortlist the best ones so if you've heard of no free launch theorem that states that no model is guaranteed to work the best so you can test so many models and you know after testing so many models you can come up with after testing yes you can say okay this is the best model that i can i think i can use to work i can probably make use of the the, the random classifier where i can make use of facebook profit so you have to iterate and test your model on different subjects different um you have to test your your model on, on different data sets you have to test your you have to test your model you have to test your data set sorry on different models yeah so you can establish the best one and know the the um kind of precision or, or the type or the type of performance metrics you are using if it's MAP, if it's um if it's um contingency table if you are if you want to make use of confusion matrix to get the um, precision and all of that you need to define all of this before you commence your project and that's all so let me quickly have the let me see yes i think that was fast so let me quickly navigate let me share my screen so i can show you how you can navigate the repository and this is very practical and i hope you all follow along so let me reshare my screen this time around so chats we share desktop so i think i've you can now see my screen again 
So now for the open source projects, let me go to GitHub. Okay, so, so I'm currently signed in in Amoe's account. And as you can see, we have different projects here already set for you. Let me see. Repositories, yes. So let's take an example. Let's say, um, let me use um, life expectancy as an example. So this is the project, right? You're, you all um, get added to this repository. And when you're added, you have access to merge pull requests. As a collaborator, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can, you can merge, you can fork, you can do all sorts of stuff, but you should leave the merging right to the project lead of your particular project. So when you have, the first step now is when you have access to this repo, or when your 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 group is working on um, let's say group 17 they're working on life expectancy the first thing the first thing that you do is to fork your repository and it's not showing here okay i have to log out first so let me log into my personal account so it becomes much more easier so i'm i'm still looking at life expectancy yeah so I'm a HQ, life expectancy. So now this is it now, right? And I'm working on this project now. I'm, I'm signing in using my own personal account. So the first step, like I said, is to fork the project. And then you fork the project like this. Yeah. So forking the project gives you, makes you create like a copy of that project. So it's done forking. Now the next step is this. I have this particular readme file here. And I I need to probably, if I'm making use of my system offline, let's say I'm using MGPTAN to look on my system to perform my analysis, I need to um, clone the clone the project here. So I'm going to clone it now. So next I open my terminal on my system, right? So let me open documents. So I create a particular document on my system. So for now, I've created this particular document here, webinar. I, I hope you can follow me closely. So this is the webinar folder that I have here. So I'm going to use to navigate into the folder. Let me see. Okay, I'm, I'm there already. And then I clone the project here, git clone, paste the link. Now I've cloned my project successfully. I have a copy of that project offline. Now the next thing that you need to do is, you need to go into that project, CD17. Yeah, and um, let's say while working, you're, you're doing some task and you've made some changes and you want to now put all these changes on GitHub. So let me create a folder here, a, a random file, echo, um, test file. And then I save, I name it, I save it as, um, to be, you know, tests.md so i've created a test file here test.md and when i check my git status i see test.md it's on track i've not added it to i've not committed i've not added it to my staging area yet and i've not even committed it so let me try adding git add git add git so i can also still check git status again so now I've added it, but I've not committed it to my branch. So now the next thing is to do is, so let me come here and do git commit and I'll, and I'll leave a, a message there. So let's say I created um, test file. So I've already committed that change to my local repo. Now it's time to push this repo, this repo to my personal, to my forked project on my account. So then I now do git push origin master so it sends it to this particular folder here so let me click here now and when i click on it i see test md right and i can see my commit message created test file now this is the interesting part so after doing this right you now create a pull request So this is the pull request I'm creating now. So I'm trying to merge what I have done here to the original Amoye life expectancy. But you can also cross check to see that, 
let me just open this page on a new tab so you can see that they actually differ. So if you check um, AMOE's 17 life expectancy, you notice that there is no test.md here, which means your own part, your own of AMOE's projects. So the thing that you need to do next is you need to merge to, you need to create, you need to create a pull request, which is what we are, we are going to do now. So I've, I, I clicked on create a pull request and I'm trying to, so let me create my pull request here. So let me create, let me name it as, yeah, I'm created test file. That's my pull request and then create pull request. So now I've created a pull request. Now it is showing, okay, let me leave a comment here. It's still, I might remember, okay, let me see. So I've created a pull request on my, on Amoe HQ. And I cannot accept now, why? Because I'm not yet a collaborator on this project. So let me let me make myself a, a collaborator on this project very quickly. So I have to log out of this account and then log in using Amoe's account again to show you. So let me log in, sign in Amoe HQ. So let me get the password. So I'm currently logged in to Amway's account. Let me search for 17. So now this is the project here. So this is what will happen. Under settings, I'm going to add myself as a collaborator. Invite a collaborator. Maybe in Coda. So that's my name. And I'm added here as a collaborator. So everyone on your team will be here as a collaborator. So you can actually see who your team members are from here. So now it's, it's my turn to accept this invite. So I log out from this account again and I let me log in again to my account so I can accept it then. So life expectancy slash invitations. So now can you see I'm OHQ invited, invited you to collaborate. So then I accept this invitation here. So now let's continue. Now I'm ready to collaborate on that project. So let me create another pull request. Let me go to, let me go to my repository again. And um, let me see, I've expectancy fog from Amoye. Pull request. No pull request. Let me, so tell me now again, let me create another file on terminal and then push it to my server. So another random file. Let me create echo mm, another test file. Oh, this is a test file. And then save the name as test file to dot md. So now the usual command git add space for all git commits the message. Let's see another test file. Now git push origin master. So I've pushed the changes to my remote repo that I forked. So once I, let me see. So once I, I refresh this page now, it should be visible. So now this is test file to another test file that is in my own private repo. So I can compare this with the original Amoye HQ project that I forked. So if I go there, yeah, you can see that it's still readme.md. It, it doesn't have those two new ones that, that I just included there. And now what you now need to do is to create a pull to, to create a pull request to merge it to the first Amoye HQ project. That is the, the one that you'll be using. So let me create a pull request now. And this is a pull request. I'm I'm using the fork project here. Pull requests. And then I come to create new pull request. 
And uh, so it sees this, this is the test file, another test file. Let me see, okay. can I merge from here? It's not showing, give you pull request. Let me see it. Okay, I'm looking from, from Amway. Let me look from my own personal project here. That's repositories. Life expectancy. Yeah, and this is mine here. Yeah. This is still Amway. This is not mine. So let me look for. Okay, I'm logging to Amway's account here. It's so confusing for me. So let me sign out again. And you no, know, let me sign out and log in to my account. So now I'm I'm in my account currently and um life expectancy is this. So forked. Comes to now putting. Okay, it has opened now. So I can see this test file here and test file too. This is my own default project that I, I actually forked. And now it's time to create a pull request. So you can see the latest commit, another test file that I just created. And when you come to pull request, you come to pull request, come to new pull request. But it's not showing. That's the funny thing. So I think what I can do now is let me check my terminal again. Uh, CMD. Okay. LSC document. Mm. Let's see webinar um, LS. So I have the life expectancy. See life expectancy. And then I go into project let me see git status. So it's up to date with master. Let me see from here. You pull request, you pull request, able to merge. Okay, so this is it here. So now I have the option of merging it from my own personal account. Because I'm because I'm, I'm a collaborator on Amway account here, I can choose to merge it now. And this is what we should not do. So what is what we should do as a team is you can leave a comment here. For instance, let's say um, I don't think we should merge this. Or oh, there should be a place here. Okay, files changed. So you come here and, and put review changes. So if you think if you don't approve of, of merging this, you can say um, request changes. I think. Oh, okay. I'm 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 the author of the of the pull request. I can't request changes. So let me leave a comment there. I I think this is this is good to go. And then approve. I can't approve because I'm the one that actually created the pull request. So then I, I submit it for review. So others also as collaborators, they can see this, right? And they can merge. So if you have what the, the, the whole idea is everyone on that project right can see this comment when you have like up to five comments there then the project team lead can now match the pull request confirm merge and once you merge right it shows on amway hq life expectancy and it, and, and it updates there also so let's check together so test and test file two so it shows here. And that thing that, that you should also take note of is this project. So as a team, right, you have to come up with your requirements. So this is the Kanban board I was talking about. And let's say this project is a life expectancy, right? So description, this is, um, so you can, you can always delete this. And the team that's working on this, you can, you can still delete it anyways. So this is um, a random project created to test tickets and um, how to use a Kanban board, and then you create a project. So now it's time to define your columns, and then you can add a, a column here as to do, create column. That's here, you can create another column as in progress, in progress, create column, and you can also create another column here as um, done, 
or probably reviewed if somebody wants to review i don't know and then probably done so all this um column needs to be created now it's time to create tickets and then you come to to do here so as a team you have to come up with all the requirements that you need so if it's um um download data sets you can add it here if the next thing that you work on is um let's say let me see create pipeline that's for the data engineering guys let's say you want to data processing pro processing data pre-processing not processing pre-processing you add uh, let's say you want to all the data augmentation that's that's you can put all, all that together and um, let's say data visualization read me create read me file very important create read me probably for for was engine if or create read me for for jke so as so all these them tasks create read me for was engine create read, um, read me for jke create read, um, read me for I don't know, doxy, anything that comes to mind. And the data storytelling guys have been equipped enough to know how, how this should be done. So created for, let's say, doxy. So you have all these projects here defined. Now, another thing that, that you should also take note of is this. So as a team, when you've defined all your requirements here, let's say someone on my team, let me say, I, I always to work on create me. So he, he moves this here. And another person on the team also moves the one that he or she's working on, yeah? So we can so you can easily track how things are going on your projects. Another thing to also take note of is this: when you are making a request, when you are creating a pull request, you have to come here and, and copy the link to your project. So let's say copy card link. So I've copied this card link now. Let me go to my and also I have access to this Amoy HQ here because I'm a collaborator. So I can you know log in, I can see, make changes, make changes to the project as an admin. So that's why it's like this here. So let me go back again and um, so I've copied this card link now, right? Copy card link. Let me make another pull request. Let me see. Let me let me make an, an under change terminal. So let me add another folder under document again there. So echo. This is how this is how to create. Uh, let me see. This is how to create. How to link copy link. How to copy link. Let me just copy link. And then let me save them as copy link dot md. So now it's time to push to GitHub origin master. So pushing it like this pushes it to my remote repository, right? So let me go to my remote repository. Mm, repository. So this is forked from perhaps. So now this is my remote repository. So it's not still showing here. Let me see. Was this was it successful? Copy links MC LS. Everything up to it, but it's not showing here. Let me see this place. So I just made a pull request to the server. Let me see. Oh, thank you. So I, I just I, I totally forgot to comment. So let me see. This this is a new instance. Okay. So let me go back there. Let me see user user CD documents. LS. Okay, CD webinar. Um CD seventeenth. Um the next thing to say let me say cd ls so it's not here okay, copy link let me say cheat add cheat commit copy link copy link kids push origin master yeah thanks for that tip abdul quadri so now i've pushed this to, to my remote repo now and once i come here like this moving code life expectancy here and i click on it like this then it shows the copy link right and now you can see these branches won't commit ahead won't commit behind amoye master that's the real branch the real repo that i forked this from 
Now, this is what I actually want you to see now. So let me create a pull request here now. And um, let me see, create a pull request, pull request, new pull request, right? So um, create pull request. I should be able to name my pull request. So copy card link. There is a GitHub syntax that they use for this. So let me quickly open a new tab here and, you know, GitHub markdown embed link. So it's markdown embed link, it's a bracket and let me see first so before I, I check to be sure I'm, I'm right. So something like um, this is my task, task embed. What's that task again? Let, let me check it. I can't remember the task that I came from. So let me, let me go to project here, life expectancy project. So let me copy this particular create readme for doxy. So let's say I, I, I just um, created readme for doxy and I've pushed my changes to GitHub and I need the so I've copied this link here, create a um, readme for doxy. So I come here, let me see task, create readme for doxy. So everyone can see it. And then I can embed the link there. I think this is how they embed the link, but I'll just cross check now to, you know, to ascertain this. So then I, I paste the link here. So let me see if that's how they embed the link, markdown, mastering markdown, quickly embed link okay that's that, that's it so you can see this is the, the embed link um on github so let's come back here and let me see i created a read for docs something like that and then you create a pull request All right so it's still creating now I don't know if it's my network, but it's creating now. So I, you know, did not show. So let me edit it again because it should not have shown like this. Let me move this space and see if this is it didn't show well. Let me see if I make this. You no, know, I'm editing from my account here. So let me see. So, so this didn't work. Well, let's let's do it again now. So let me save this first. It shouldn't show like this. There, there's a way they always embed this thing here. So let me go back and make another pull request again. Let's test again. So let's see. Terminal, right? Let me create another echo file, echo another test file, right? And I put um, test file 04, test 04. So now. I've created a new file now. So you should not forget to add and then commit. So let's say another test file, test file for created. So now push origin master. So I've pushed that to master branch. So now what should be here is not what is here currently. So I wanted to embed this, create readme for doxy with this link. So when you, when you click on the link, it takes you to the board, but that's not the case now. So we are going to do that again and hopefully it works again. So let's merge this now since it's it's not harmful, right? Or we can always ignore it, but let's merge. Okay. This part here, why isn't this working? Let me see. So that's, that's how it is now. Okay. So let me see, link to Google. Yes, so this markdown is not working here, which is very surprising, but let me see if there is a arc task. Let me move this and see if, if, if it works, it doesn't. Okay, try again, probably my network. So, so it has been merged. So now let's, let's do this again now. So I've made another pull request to the server, right? Let me go back to, this is um, fun for me, but let's let's go back again to try that one, once more. So it, it makes it work very clean. So let me, let me do that once more again. So now I have two branch commits. This is the, next, the, the latest one I, I just created, test 04 created, right? And then let's make an, another merge request, pull request rather to the um, repository. So let me come here, create pull request and uh, new pull request. So it's the name. Oh, okay, see where it is again. So let me go back to my own personal repo. 
not from life expectancy. Mm, show this, okay, this. Yeah, so this is my personal repo, test of all created, pull request, new pull request. It's going, it's going back to this particular place. So let me see. Living code is ahead of I'm I'm a HQ master, and I I think I should be able to create a pull request from here. So pull request, new pull request. Don't change it. Okay, still changing. So let let me come here and go to expectancy. So now comparing. I'm I'm not to compare. I'm going to pull request here. So it's PR open. So I can make a pull request here. So let me create another pull request. So um, basically the, the whole idea of this is as a project lead, you, you need to see the comments first. If you have up to like five comments and, and that's why we have lots of people in the group. We have 20 people in the group. So you can you know leverage on each other's skills to make this happen. Uh, let's create that last pull request before I, I call it a meeting. Let me create another file again. Let me say terminal. Okay, terminal. Let me come to my terminal again. Oh, not this. Terminal, yeah. It's too long. Okay, it's better this way. So let me create another file. I've created sample files, like lots of them already. So echo. Um, sample last last test so this is the last test here uh, and let me call it test dot i i hope everyone is everyone understands at least to a certain degree of what they expected to do so now because not normally even before now looking at your your, your github repository of what i've been seeing is just you just put your code with the, with the um, jupyter notebook and just push it there or just copy it from somewhere and just put it there now you have to make it very clean and and very transparent so let me see last test. So that's the name now. And then git status, right? You see it has on track files and then you have to add it first, git add. Or you can even specify the name properly, but then add all, git commit message. This is the last test commit and git push origin master. Then I've pushed this to, to the master branch. And let me come back here and this is, so let me copy this um, download data sets link. Come to my own personal project here, my personal repository here and life expectancy, that's it, right? So last test should be it. So th this is the last test commit. Now le let me create a pull request for the last time again. So, and I also include the link. So pull request, New pull request. Why is it now? Last test, create pull request. So I can create pull request here. So now I'm going to, you know, the last time I tried adding the IPA link here. So I'm, I'm going to try it here if, if it will work here. So th this is the link to the, the ticket itself there. And let me put the um, test task. What was that again? Okay, you no. Know? Task um, task so probably manage doxy. I can't really remember the details, but let me let me check here. So let me go to projects, life expectancy projects, and I have in progress here. Let me copy the link here. Download data set. I, I think this was the one I used. So let me come here, paste it here, and create a pull request task, uh, my download data set, let me put download data set here. So let me, last test commit, so I save like this. And then it shows like this here. So anyone, any, anyone coming here and sees your message can click on it and then goes to, no, this is not it. I've not even made it yet, okay, so. It's still opened. So after creating pull request, the drill is that you won't merge it. Only your project lead can merge it, right? 
and I'm assuming the position of a project is that's why I'm merging it now. So then you cannot merge it from here, and you can and you can leave a commit here, probably create data sets, data sets successfully downloaded, something like that, successfully downloaded, and then you merge comments, probably can comment and then merge pull request. Well, I'm looking at, let me say, okay, this, this still didn't work. So it feels like something I'm doing is wrong here. Let me edit this. Update comments. Yeah, I was leaving a space there. So now that I've updated it, so you can, if anyone comes to your project and, and clicks on this like this, right? It takes them to the board and then it highlights on this particular task here. So then they know that, okay, this is the task someone is working on, this is the task, um, Sophia is working on it. This is the task Tim is working on any, anybody. So it tells you that this is the task that they are working on. So when, when you're creating a pull request, always make sure you copy your card link. So it's very easy to know, okay, this, this is the work that they just finished working on. So you can define lots of requirements here, probably create pipeline for data engineering and all of that. So, so I think that's all I've, I have like four minutes remaining left in my time. So I think that's all from my end. So Femi, you can, the ball in your court, please. Okay, this has been exciting. Thank you so much, Toby. I'm sure the interns are as excited as I am to, to learn more today. So one of one of the things I, I think I've grabbed, as well as so many other persons that we've seen from, from the as we've seen from the uh, comment boxes in, on YouTube and Zoom is the excitement that comes with seeing it happen live. So thank you once again, Toby Lover Adichumbo. Then we have a couple of um, questions, but before then, I would crave you know, just to listen to what some of our participants have to say. First of all, on YouTube, let me read what Uwakon Tsuk said. He, said. he says, I am excited. And then Sharon Ibeja agrees with him. Chinye Adora Chuku says, this is really confusing for me. Guess it's time for me to see tutorials on the use of Git and GitHub. So Toby, I think you've converted somebody now to become a disciple of Git and GitHub. Also on Zoom, we have a couple of comments, but before we take the comment, the comments on, on Zoom, there are a few questions that, we, that our interns would like to get answers for. And I'll take them gradually. One is, the idea seems very interesting, but looks like a thing for those in data science and data engineering track. So what would be the role of the data storytellers in the project that is if they will not be left out? So um, basically the data storyteller can actually do so much. For instance, they can, if um, for, for every project and for every project that they are doing, yes, you might make use of some third party libraries and some third party resources that you have to write a documentation for. So there is this site, Docs. You can, you can choose to write a documentation. You can check out Docs and document each of each steps that your other team members are actually taking through throughout the course, throughout the um, implementation. So you, for um, those in data storytelling track, they can create a robust readme file for probably for the whole project. If you're making use of Kubeflow, you create all of these things there, right? And, and all of these things go towards the assessment because we we'll check out all these things. If you think um, if you think you, you, you're making use of Wars Engine, when, when you discuss the requirements with your team members, you can write a documentation for Wars Engine and you can also put it there. So, that, so basically for storytelling, I think what, what comes to mind now is um, readme documentations and all of that, and anything that they actually want to visualize, you can also, you can also assist, right? And for storytelling and science and data science, some of the um, libraries that you guys will be using might, might cut across one another. So you can also still assist and take on tasks that if you think that you can pre-process data, why not? You can tell them that this is what I want to do. So it's, it's not just about even doing just the readme file and, and all of that. You can also choose to do that stuff that you think you're fine with. So my, my only concern now is for those in data engineering because no one can actually, someone in, story, in storytelling cannot say, okay, I want to go and build a, a pipeline. It's not even possible. So science and storytelling, they can still, you know, co cohabit and, and do stuff together. 
Okay, thank you very much. I'm sure those in storytelling are, are happier now than, than they were before. Okay, another one again is how do we fetch the data that will be used in this project? And what areas of life should we anticipate to do the project in? Okay, so the data sets that we um that we actually that, that we're using for this project are actually very small. So because we understand the problem with um, compute power and size, so you can either choose to make use of Google Colab or you can make use of Jupyter Notebook on your system. And for areas of life, we have so many, <laughs> like it's, it cuts across different areas and areas of life. Like for instance, we have one in the, we have one about predicting and predicting admission, you know, using your GRE scores and, and all of that to predict if you, get, if, you, if you get admitted to university, we have, one, I, I think we have one on breast cancer classification. I, I can't say for sure, but it cuts across different disciplines. And working together as a team is is where the, the fun is because even be, before now, you might not be exposed to um, creating projects on GitHub or, or working together with someone and saying, okay, it's time to put a commit there. I've, I've added my commit message. Can, can you make the, the merge request now? Like it's, it's fun to me and seeing everyone actually partake in this, that, that's where the end game is. Okay, thank you, Toby. That was that was awesome. Okay, let me take a few feedback. Well, I, I, I got some feedbacks from, from, from Zoom. And this is coming from John Iwozo. He says that this stage E looks like fun. I think I'm excited to see that. And then um if I invent here Guara, I actually agree with him. He said, yes, this is a lot. So I, I think we're, we're expecting to see a lot more fun coming up soon. Okay, another question. Somebody is asking, what are the limitations of the functions of a collaborator in the repository? Or would he have as much access as the repository's admin? Yes. So once you added to a project as a collaborator, now because we're not making use of organization, we're making use of, of a standard project. Once you are added to a project as, am I mute? I think not. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm not mute. So once you have access, once you're added as a collaborator to a project, right, you can do whatever the project admin can do. So everyone has equal access. So that's why I took us through the whole process of do not make your commits, only your projects uh, they can make your commits. You can only leave um, um, remark, fine, I, I think we should merge this. Once we have up to like five remarks, your project head is informed and you can match the comments, right? So, so we have like the old, what should I even call it? So, so, so we can have like a very transparent process when you know that, okay, fine. I think we should match this comment. The, the project lead is not making decisions based on his own feeling alone. So for instance, now let's also say that I, I, I pushed them, I created a pull request to create a readme file, for instance. And in that um, readme file, there are grammatical mistakes there. I can put a question, a, I can raise, put a comment there, please review, um, please review your grammatical mistakes in, in your document, something like that. And then, you know, the person that is to merge the request sees it and say, okay, wow, it's, it's, I, I can't merge it now. So the project team was, the project lead must wait for like five commits, for like five comments, yes, from the, team members before making a pull request, before making the pull request rather. Okay. Thank you very much to the, yeah, I think that, I think that uncovers a lot of the questions that we have here. But then let me read something, something interesting from Emmanuel Albert. He says, this is huge and this is interesting. So I think your presentation got to us to be added. A lot of the interns are happy and we are excited with what we've seen so far. Then Ifan is also asking, he said, how will the group pick him? How are we doing the group picking and will it be shuffled? He also advise, he's also advising that the project lead, whoever will be the project lead should probably be someone who is not a beginner. And that's at the initial stage, I guess, yes. So how will the groups be picked? Yeah, so the project lead, right? How, how they should be chosen. So the way we created the groups we we did not you know put 
those that are very strong together, we actually made it a meld of those that are strong and those that are not strong. So we can have like a balanced team. So I don't know how you want to pick your project lead, but I advise you that make sure your project lead, lead understands how to make use of GitHub properly. So it can even guide you. Prop, you know, normally, even before now, you'd have noticed that some people that are actually good might not really have the time to teach others, but because they are project lead, they have to um, create that time to make sure everyone understands how to make use of GitHub. So make sure your project lead, right, understands all of these things. And whenever somebody creates a pull request, always make sure that you, you make a comment there because we are, we are seeing what you are doing. We can see the number of comments, you, the number of comments that you put there and your engagements. Because for the next open source project, it will be, it'll be completely different from this. So make sure on, on GitHub, anytime someone puts a, embraces a pull request there, if you feel it's, it's not good to go, give your reasons why. If you feel it's good to go, also give your reasons why. And after every five, five days, because we, want every, we, want, we don't want the role or, or the duty of a project lead to you know, be inundating. So we want it to go around. So anybody also interested, anybody that, that actually want, wants to become a project lead can also come to the front. And, and that reason why we're actually doing it like this is because we, we, we understand that the project lead might not even be active. So rather than wasting your three weeks, right? So it's better to just probably one week just go and then probably the remaining two weeks, those that are actually very active and ready to work and say, okay, let me take up this project and, and let me complete it. Okay, thank you very much, Toby. We just have one more question, just one more question, and then we'll wrap up. And this one is very, very direct. So what is asking, how will this project be graded? Yeah, so, <laughs> nice. So um, re regarding grading of, of your project, <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, so let me give you my thoughts um, as regards this, right? So I, I wish I were an oracle of, of data science to actually answer that or oracle of GitHub. So what, what we are going to do is this from the beginning, if you check my slide, I, I wrote that. Let me even open my slide because there is, there is, a, <laughs> there is a, a caveat I put there at the beginning of my slide. So, I, so I, let me see. Okay, so I, I said the project will be assessed based on how it validates real life application. Yeah. So basically this is the answer. <laughs> but it, it's not compulsory that everyone partakes in it, right? And, and that's why we made it option now. So we are just looking for the best people, those that those that are using GitHub properly, those that those that you know, some it might not I, I don't say that you that you should not try and complete the whole project because it's it's fun. And if you even try, if um, the, engineer, the engineering guys in the team can actually, you know, at the, at the end of the day, test their pipeline that they've been building since like stage B. I mean, they've been, they've been building a cube flow pipeline, micro cubes and, and all of that since stage B. So if they can actually test all the things that they've been building with your, with your data set, then, then that's amazing. So we are looking at, we are not really looking at, should I say completion, but then it's fine to complete, but then we're also looking at engagement. So, so that's why I said, always making use of GitHub. If you are pushing your, your codes to GitHub, if you are like, we, I'll, I'll actually check all of these things. We'll, we'll check all of these things one by one. We have time for that. So make your comments, your, your commit messages. The way, I, the way I explained to link your task to your project Kaban board task, also do that. So we can see who is working on which and who is, and who is not working on something. So from, from that, we, we can easily know the engagement. So even as a project lead, if, um, your team members are not even working enough or they are not doing what they are meant to do. It, it's okay to do the task by yourself, but then just make sure you carry everyone along so we can see what is actually happening. We can see the number of tasks, tasks that you are doing. We can see who made the commit and we can see who pushed the request, who accepted. So all these things are actually put together to um, for the grading process. We can't say that there is a one size fit all or check the best accuracy, all those things to matter. But then we are looking at collaboration. So that's why we actually picked everyone from different strengths, not just the best on the leaderboard. We picked people that actually showed interest not on the leaderboard. We actually selected them for this. So we want everyone to, to understand how this is done. So for the next stage, for the next project to work on, to have better grasp as to what to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Toby. Um, I guess we, you've exhausted all the questions that we have. And I'm sure they, they are excited, and but they, I'm sure the, the participants are still yearning to hear something. 
you sound like someone who has so much wisdom in your head. So as regards going into the next stage, is there any words that you'd like to let them hear and maybe motivate them? Yeah, from my end, the only thing that I have to say now is um, collaborate, really. Um, Africans, and, and not just Africa, we, we love doing things independently. And, you know, on, 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 on Slack, someone mentioned something that the collaboration has decreased. We have people that understand how this, this is done, these things are done, but then they are keeping to, to themselves. So let's, let's be open to change. Let's come together and make this work. If you don't understand something, always ask your question there if you feel if you feel that you can also help us also help. because I, I also noticed that some people on, on Slack, what did they do just to ask question? After asking question, then they disappear. So I, I won't mention names now, but then they are just to ask question. After asking, who can help me answer? They won't, they, won't, they won't even tell the person thank you. After the person has put the answer there, then they'll just go and do their normal life. So like, it's, it's okay to, you, you, you can also assist and also contribute your own quota, but then let's make sure that we collaborate and learn from one another. So th that's like my advice. I know that we are big on completing the whole project, but then let's grow together. We can see all your comments. We can see all your comments. We can see how you are setting up your task, how you are naming your readme, your your commit messages too. It's so important. So let's let's see how you do all of these things. Find out how to name um, commit messages properly. Find out how these things are done in in the in the same environment, so you can you know so 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 you can even. That's all from my hand anyway. So I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm tempted to give you a round of applause. So thank you very much, our very own Toby Loba Adejumo, and to all of our participants who read from him, collaborate. I, I think he repeated collaborate more than twice. So collaborate, collaborate find out how it is done. So I guess we'll leave ourselves with those words and then we'll allow ourselves to ponder over them. Meanwhile, from our end, this is where we'll call it a meeting for today. Still more updates will come your way and we, we encourage you to stay safe. We encourage you to continue to collaborate, find out how it is done. So this is where we end the meeting for today. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your questions and thank you for all the feedbacks that you've given. We hope that this and many more will become better as we progress. Thank you, guys. Yeah, bye. Bye.